Good morning, good morning, Fed Phoenix fam. So, first off, um, you know, the subscribership numbers are slowly growing on the channel, and I'm super, super excited. So, if you have not subscribed um, yet, please do. Um, it costs you absolutely nothing, and it does me a world of good. So, And I may have some really good news in a couple months, but I'm kind of keeping that in my pocket until we see how things play out. So, with that, there's just a little couple updates and something-somethings before we get into the video. You guys see them in my, my, my nightgown. People call these moo-moos nowadays, like the loose, flowy nightgowns. I, they're not actually moo-moos, though, right? Anyway, so this video today um, <clears throat> is going to be on social media prison preparing, like preparing for prison and how social media can be your friend in that. Now, for a lot of people on this journey, um, it's very private. It's very embarrassing. Um, they don't, of course, naturally want to answer questions about it or talk about it anymore than they have to or anymore with people they need to. Um, but, you know, most of us, our cases were very public because they're federal, right? You know, there was the news and when you got arrested, when you got indicted, when your door got kicked in, when you got sentenced... Um, so whether we like it or not, these tend to be very public situations. Um, so how social media can help you with preparing for prison and while you're in prison. I do not, do not recommend, um, you know, making a public spectacle of your situation or using your social media platforms to try to minimize, to try to do damage control on how the media has made you look or, or what the rumors about the situation are saying. or Don't even entertain that. Don't. Um, <clears throat> it, it generally will work against you. And because you've now been labeled a criminal, people are going to assume that anything you're saying that is that, that, that does anything to minimize you being, you know, a villain is BS. So, you know, don't, don't add fuel to the fire. But what you're going to do with your social media is preparing for prison and how prison or how social media can be a tool to assist you while you're incarcerated. I'm going to tell you about that. So one thing I recommend is changing all of your passwords on your social media to one thing that you will remember or write it down somewhere where no one's going to find it, you know, whatever, um, prior to going to prison. Because when you're in prison, who knows what's going to get hacked, what's going to get cloned, you know, and you at that point, you have no way to really monitor it and no control over it. So you want to kind of batten down the hatches. Um, if your social media profiles are public, um, you you definitely at this point want to make them private. You want to you want to upgrade your privacy settings if it's not already Fort Knox on your social media, you want to make it that um, some, some social media platforms will allow you to suspend your social media account to kind of put it on hold. Um, you may want to consider doing that. Another thing, um, and this is what I, I recommend, this is going to be a very short video, um, that will help you while you're incarcerated via social media is I like Facebook for this. Um, I guess you probably maybe could do it through other platforms, but I would recommend Facebook. But what you're going to do, let's say you have... A decent amount of friends and family who at this point prior to your incarceration are saying they want to be helpful to you while you're incarcerated or they want to keep in contact with the feds you may get shuffled around a lot there are going to be lockdowns and technical issues and all kinds of reasons where periodically your people do not hear from you and they don't understand what's going on and eventually they'll get you and them will get accustomed to this just kind of being the new norm and it won't be you know concerning anymore but in the meantime so before I went to prison, I made a Facebook group called Audrey's Incarceration Journey because Audrey is my legal first name. And um, it was a private group, invite only. Um, I made my best friend an admin, um, which, you know, I honestly should have chose better because I know, you know, no, not no slight towards her, but she's not a very proactive person. And it would have been far more beneficial had it been in the hands of someone who not only I could trust, but also tended to be proactive about things. But so you can make, let's say your name is Jane or Joe, you know, Joe's incarceration journey, Jane's uh, prison experience. I don't know. And what you're going to do is you're going to create this group, right? Invite only, um, select one, maybe two people to be admins. These are the people that are going to be running the group in your absence. Um, 
and you want to, uh, I wouldn't get into your case. I wouldn't get into, I didn't do it. I wouldn't get into, oh, here's the news article. Can you believe this BS? Ha, ha, ha. None of that. But what you're going to do is before you go in, you're going to put your name. This is, this is my inmate number. This is the facility I'm going to or I'm self-surrendering to when you know that information. Here's, the, uh, here's how you can send money to my books and put a link to, um, I believe it's called Corrections to Corrections. Western Union actually has this app specifically for sending money to inmates, which is much more efficient than the typical Western Union app. But, you know, make posts explaining, you know, if you want to send money via, via, via MoneyGram, here's a link to it. Here's how you do it. You know, here's a screenshot of the step-by-step -step directions. Here's my inmate number. Another post, if you'd like to send money to my books via, you know, Western Union, this is how. If you would like to, you know, send money to my books via a money order, cannot be a check. Here's the address to the lockbox. This is what the front of the envelope needs to look like. And, and you know, and maybe take write one out and take a picture. Um, also, your admins while you're incarcerated will be able to update like, oh no, you know, Jane got COVID, but I think, you know, I th she's going to pull through okay. Or, oh, Joe's getting transferred. Don't know where he's at right now. Keeping an eye on the BOP site. We'll update when we know. Um, oh, you know, Jane's getting her FSA credits. Her date changed. You know, make posts like if you need to know where I'm at or what my, my you know, out date is. Because like with the FSA, it will, it will update, you know, as you earn credits on the front end. It'll update taking time off the back end. You know, this is go to BOP inmate locator. Type in my name and this is the information I'll show you. If it says not in custody, what that means is I'm in the process of being transferred somewhere or I haven't self-surrendered yet. Or I'm in, you know, I mean, you know, just kind of, you know, make all these small posts, small doses of information that can be helpful to your loved ones. Um, maybe put together an Amazon wish list and uh, go ahead and make the address that, that it gets sent to the prison. That way, you know, in your name, um, that way people, it's very easy. You know, here's here's an Amazon wish list of magazine subscriptions and books I would like to read. Um, most do not allow you to have planners. They generally will allow puzzle books. You can put those on there, but not planners, not calendars usually. Um, you can do a Walmart wish list the same way. Make a separate post. If you would like to send me some reading materials while I'm incarcerated, since this is all you can send me other than money, you know, um, you know, here's some things I would like to read or reread, or here's some series I'm interested in and put that link up. Because the easier you make it for people to be supportive to you, the more likely they're going to be supportive. And then, um, in addition to that, make sure your admin is someone you trust to manage this, which can be a bit tricky to navigate. Someone who you're, you're confident, you know, will certainly be in contact with you regularly throughout this. If you have any doubts about them staying in contact, about them being proactive and keeping your thing updated, whatever then um, you want to have a secondary admin as well, two admins. So you have someone else you can call and be like, hey, you know, I, uh, you know, they're, they're not giving me my time off, you know, and you can update with these kind of things, you know, very vaguely, but very simply, you know, um, for whatever reason, you know, oh, Jane's FSA credits are not, are not being currently processed. You know, this is, these are steps we're taking to, to fix it, you know, a habeas corpus, the admin remedies. Um, we'll keep you all updated on the progress. And a lot of times how this is mostly beneficial for you as the inmate is the people in your life who you want to know what's going on, who you intend to, who you have close ties with prior to prison and, and want to have close ties with when you come home. A lot of these people are, are going to have a difficult time kind of making the effort or aren't going to consistently make the effort to, to maintain ties with you because it's a lot more effort than if you were in the free world. Whereas with this Facebook group, now, anytime you cross their mind, they can go and kind of get an update on how you're doing and see how things are going. And, you know, when you send pictures home from prison, you know, to, you know, have your admin post a, a, the picture up on, on the Facebook group. You know, oh, this is how Jane's doing. Her hair is growing out. Oh, this is how Joe's doing. You know, look at that fresh shave. You know, mine's, mind you of his college days. You know, stuff like that. It gives people a, a, a subconscious rapport like they feel like they're more involved in what they are and they're they're more they're more informed on your journey than they would be otherwise so when you come home the ties that become strained are less strained and uh you know you're more on the same page there's less catching up to do and and you know so with this the 
the idea of making a, a private or secret Facebook group, invite only. Um, make sure you make the settings to only admins can add, add additional members, that members cannot add members. Um, because you do want to protect your privacy, you know, within reason. I certainly do. I don't know if you're a very public person. I'm not. Um, but this way, people, if they want to be of assistance, they can. Even if they kind of, oh, I mean to do this or do that, but I haven't gotten around to it. You know, they they know. Um, additionally, before you come home from prison, um, you know, once you've read the Halfway House Handbook, and, you know, ideally your closest contact person on the outside has as well, if you do not already have the things you'll need for your halfway house bag, um, you know, they can put together a wish list of things for your halfway house bag and put that up there. Now, those things, of course, would get sent to them, to the admin, to your contact person on the free world. Um, <clears throat> let's see what else. But this is a really good way to maintain ties, even if it's one-sided and connection with, you know, your friends and family in the free world while you're incarcerated and to keep people kind of updated on what's going on and how you're doing and, and, you know, and whatnot. And I think that's important, you know, anything you can do, you know, whether it, you actually are interactive with it or not while you're incarcerated that encourages, um, and, and maintains, yet alone strengthens is great, but that's, that's, that's really re shooting for the stars. Your, your ties and your community and your family and your friend group while you're incarcerated is going to benefit you when you come home. It's going to make your reentry smoother. Um, another thing I would do is before you go in, since you have the time, you know, make a post about how Core Links works. You know, explain to them, you know, there's the Core Links app. Here's a link, um, you know, in the Play Store, whatever the Apple version of that is. Um, you know, the premium membership is like $6 a year. It's literally 50 cents a month. You know, it's ideal to get it because things seem to go smoother that way. Um, you know, but, uh, you know, you you go in with your contacts emails and you send them a request to, to co communicate with them via email. Now on the inside, it's called true links, but in the free world, it's called core links. So most people, even on course readers refer to it as core links because that's what the free world knows it as. Um, you know, they need to check their spam folders. A lot of times the, the invite code and what they have to, to just set that up properly doesn't come in the inbox. It comes in the spam folder. Um, you know, you can have a post explaining these things. Um, you can have a post explaining if you're a woman, you may, you will likely have access to core link video visits, which should be for men and women, but for women at least is, I think is, is, is a decent start. And honestly, compared to a lot of things that the BOP should do that they don't do, it's almost impressive. Almost. Um, but you know, you can, you can have a, a post, you know, with a link to the, the app for core links video visits. Corrections to corrections is the name of the, uh, the app specifically through Western Union for sending money to inmates. But you know, um, that just occurred to me. <laughs> But, you know, you know, you can put all this information out there initially. Um, and you can even tell people, you know, let's say your contact person um, has Cash App, PayPal, Zelle, Facebook Pay, whatever, and you trust them financially. Um, you can say, hey, if you don't want to deal with the, the hassle of going through corrections to corrections, Western Union, MoneyGram, sending money, or if you want to very simply and quickly send me money, you can send it, I, you know, you can send it to such and such as, Facebook pay, email, cash app, whatever. Again, attaching a link will make this much more likely to actually be useful. Um, you know, and then you can tell your contact person on the outside, because of course, other than sending money orders to lockbox, there are fees when you send money to an inmate. So you can tell them, hey, you know, once it gets up to $100 increments, can you go ahead and send it to me via the corrections to corrections or, you know, um, you know, at, you know, $50 increments or whatever. Once it's 50 or more, can you just go to the post office and get a money order and send it to the lockbox and just shoot me an email, let me know it's on its way. Um, because that process, I did that a lot. That will take, from the time your loved one mails it to the time it actually appears on your inmate account, it can be about a week. They say up to two weeks, but usually it's about a week. Um, so it's much slower than the other ways, but it's also a bit cheaper. And depending on the age and the uh, technical ability of your, your loved ones, it, it, quite frankly, might just be the easiest route for them. And if it's easier for them and they're doing you a favor, not a problem, right? Um, but yeah, and you can even put your cash app, if you like, your free world cash app. You can say, hey, I'm not going to have access to my cash app when I come, you know, while I'm incarcerated. But 
it, you know, I'm going to have to kind of hit the ground running and, and do a lot. And this is not going to be a cheap endeavor. And this is really good for people with like FRPs. If you, if you, if your loved ones want to help you financially while you're incarcerated with this journey, but you don't want it to count against your FRP. And I have a video on those. If you don't know what that is, um, you know, they could just send that 20, 30 bucks or whatever to your cash app. And when you come home, it's in your cash app account for you. Um, you can also have the person you trust, you know, if, if this is something you're comfortable with, give them the login information for your cash app. Because some people may go, well, it's just easier for me to cash app, you know, Jane or Joe Doe's cash app account. I'll just do that. It's simple. I've done it before. But you need that money on your commissary account for whatever reason. So if you can leave someone with the information um, to log into that and manage it for you, to let you know, you know, how much money's in it, if money needs taken out. Or maybe it's your kid's birthday and you want to send them a birthday gift, you know. Um, you can say, hey, you know, go into my cash app and, you know, cash app their other parent, you know, 60 bucks. Um, you know, or Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever you're into, the Eid, you know. Um, it gives you the ability to do that. Now, you do not, do not, and it will be very tempting. You'll see people all around you doing it. Most of them not getting caught or in trouble, so it'll be tempting, but do not. You let your cash app be used to send money to the loved ones or families of other inmates for payments for things like new boots you bought off the compound instead of off a of commissary or, you know, snacks that somebody made in their cube that you bought. Always barter, always pay with goods for those things, you know, hand to hand. Do not discuss it over the phone, over email, or in letters. Now, your outgoing mail is not monitored. So, if you want to say something about something in your outgoing mail to a loved one and make sure you're very clear with them and they're the kind of person who would understand it, you know, these outgoing letters are not monitored. So, please do not mention this via phone, email, or an incoming letter. Like, I can only just speak from my side. And then we have to leave it alone. Um, you know, if it's something that, that cannot be comfortably discussed with Big Brother looking over your shoulder. Um, but yeah, but you can really use social media. Again, I suggest a Facebook group that is private or secret. Preferably secret. That way people that aren't in it can't even look for it. Um, you know, if you don't want people outside your circle to really know, you know, any more of your business than they have to. And uh, try to add, you know, the people, you know, that you plan to stay in contact with on there. Um, make sure you're very, very, very uh, conscientious about who you choose to be an admin, you know, because this is going to be the person in charge in your absence. Again, if you think one of your, you know, your initial admin may be too busy or, you know, get sidetracked easily or whatever to, to really possibly uh, fulfill that role, you know, to the greatest ability or to what you would want, then make a secondary admin as well, two admins. That way, when one person's like, oh, I'm, I'm going to make that post in the group about you being transferred to such and such, because when you get transferred, then, then your admin can update the group and pin it at the top of the group, you know, and take down the, you know, on pin the original, you know, this is the address to write this person. If you would like them to be able to email you, you know, um, you know, shoot me the admin, you know, your email address and I'll send it to them. Um, or write them a letter one time with your email address so that they can add you on the core links. Um, so, you know, so that's just something I just wanted to mention that, um, you know, it's something that's often overlooked, but it's certainly a way that, uh, you can kind of use social media to your benefit while you're incarcerated, um, to really kind of help you get through your time and really to help you have, um, your people be as informed as possible. So they feel like they're on this journey with you, you know, more, more than they would otherwise. But, um, also, so when you come home you know, you have stronger ties with people. People feel like they, they've been on this journey with you more. They've been more involved. And and that will certainly assist you with your reentry. So this is how you can use social media to prepare for prison, um, specifically. I will make a lot of other videos on preparing for prison financially, socially, um, spiritually, financially, you know. Um, but this is just specifically regarding social media because, you know, I, th I think it's significant enough that it deserves its own video. So my cash app and PayPal will be in the description if you'd like to donate to the channel or tip me for being helpful. If you found this helpful, um, please subscribe if you've not already. The link to the merch line will be in the description. And um, as you guys know, I'm working on my first book, Into the Fire. It will be a memoir of my 16 months in federal prison. I'm not making much headway at all on that right now, but, you know, it's a work in progress, so. And whatever you're going through, it is a slice of your life, and you will get through it because you have to. So, good day. God bless.